When you download the Baker's app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Baker's makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Baker's app now to save big on your next purchase. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, Eric Christensen. And today, the medication I'm going to cover is hyoscyamine. Now, this is a medication... I will uh, be frank with you and, and say that I don't see a terribly often amount. Um, with that said, you're going to experience that in clinical practice where you come across meds that you know you don't see terribly often, but you need to obviously be able to dig into it, look, uh, and make sure you know what that medication does, how that medication works, and how that interplay may play out with other medications. So, um, Hyacinin, brand names of this medication, Levsin and Anaspaz are the two names I've heard thrown around. Uh, Anaspaz, a good way to help remember uh, the indication for this medication or where it's primarily used, at least where I see it used in clinical practice, is think of antispasm, Anaspaz, um, in that it can help patients with symptoms of uh, GI spasms, GI pain, uh, symptoms mainly associated uh, with IBS and things of that nature. Um, I've done uh, dicyclamine in the past, so it's it's going to be kind of a similar um, mechanism, similar adverse effect profile in general. So mechanistically, it works similar to dicyclamine. It is an anticholinergic medication that basically helps kind of ease that smooth muscle, reduces that cramping, um, but can slow down the GI tract as well, which, you know, can have some negative aspects to it as well. So that relaxation of smooth muscle, that provides kind of that pain relief, uh, that that benefit potentially in uh, GI spasms. Uh, in addition the anticholinergic effects, we can obviously have some troublesome problems from those effects. So anticholinergics, dry eyes, dry mouth, uh, urinary retention, constipation, confusion, um, increasing fall risk, particularly uh, in our geriatric patient population. Um, I've talked about those adverse effects, uh, those anticholinergic adverse effects in the past on previous podcasts. So what I really wanted to, to dive down into here was uh, the prescribing cascade, and this gives me a good opportunity to do just that. So when I review a medication list, I always look at medications that may be treating adverse effects. So when I see a patient that's on a saliva substitute, for example, boom, I know Right. It's very, very likely that they're not that they're using it for dry mouth. They're not using it for anything else. It's generally not used for anything else. Um, same thing with dry eyes. If you see a patient who's on a bunch of artificial tears, uh, maybe they're on restasis eye drops, medications for dry eyes, you've got to recognize that that's potentially a side effect, um, mostly most likely going to be from anticholinergic medications. Uh, that urinary retention, so if I see orders for uh, Flomax or I see worsening um, urinary retention, maybe in our patients with uh, BPH, for example, I'm definitely going to go back and look at whether they're having anticholinergic adverse effects. 
Constipation, another classic example where we may add stimulant laxatives like Senna or Bisicodal and manage the adverse effects from the anticholinergic medication. So making sure that we're not seeing some of those uh, prescribing cascade things, and that's leading to polypharmacy and, and all the issues that, that go along with that. Uh, one last one I, I did want to mention, I've seen in clinical practice um, definitely a, a few times is a uh, patient has increasing confusion, uh, memory problems, and they're on anticholinergic medications or a high load of anticholinergics, uh, including hyoscyamine or something. And I see a dementia medication get added, such as uh, memantine or denepazil, and trying to, again, treating side effects of a medication with more medications. So then you run into to more and more problems. So I definitely wanted to share those examples. Those are things in clinical practice that uh, as a consultant pharmacist, clinical pharmacist, I look out for. Um, I, I work with patients closely on that or I have in the past. Uh, so definitely got to keep uh, tabs on that for sure. All right. So that's the, the main uh, adverse effect profile. Um, this drug is dosed uh, throughout the day, and it's, it's kind of most often taken on an as-needed basis. So in all patients, you, you likely, you probably won't see it scheduled. Um, I maybe have seen it a couple of times scheduled, but uh, most patients will generally take it as they're uh, having symptoms and, and issues. So in a patient that's on this medication, they might not necessarily be taking it all the time either. So that's something we obviously have to assess, have to discuss with the patient so we can understand when they do take it, how often they take it. And then we can also ask, okay, when you have taken it, have you noticed other adverse effects, other issues come along? All right, so that's going to wrap up our first section. Let's take a quick break from our sponsor, and we will wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, definitely go check out meded101.com. We've got pharmacotherapy, geriatrics, ambulatory care, and the newer, uh, relatively newer certification BCMTMS study material. So definitely go check those out, support the sponsor. Uh, in addition, we've got some professional development um, tools as well at meded101.com slash store. Uh, so we've got a, a webinar on writing medication recommendations as well as um, a guide to long-term care consulting. So uh, I've definitely put in a, a ton of hours putting these together and providing you with a lot of real-life, real practical information. So you can find those at meded101.com slash store. If you're not a pharmacist, if you're another healthcare professional, nurse, nurse practitioner, PA, med student, uh, physician, and so on, um, you can go uh, check out our selection of books. Uh, we've got links to Amazon Books as well as books on audible.com. Drug Interactions, uh, case studies, uh, different things that um, come up in clinical practice uh, on a relatively regular basis um, and really helping you develop your thought process on managing medications and uh, helping to make our patients safe when using medications as well. So again, go check out those resources, meded101.com slash store. So I alluded to my newer book on drug interactions. Definitely go check that out. Let's get into the drug interactions on hyoscyamine. And the first thing I think about is the additive anticholinergic effects. So, um, you know, I think of constipation. So if a patient's on uh, hyoscyamine and then they're on opioids, uh, maybe calcium channel blockers, those can all have additive effects on constipation. Okay. Uh, same thing with sedation. These medications can definitely have sedative properties. And in patients who are on other medications that have sedative properties, your uh, gabapentins, your you know skeletal muscle relaxants, um, your sleep aids, all those uh, benzos, all those different types of medications that are sedating, uh, we can definitely have uh, some of those additive effects. Uh, other 
you know, additive anticholinergic burden problems. Um, confusion is an issue, uh, definitely in our geriatric patient population, uh, as well as uh, fall risk. So, you know, your Benadryls, your hydroxazines, uh, tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, um, even, you know, in certain situations, some of your inhaled anticholinergics can have additive uh, dry mouth adverse effects like your ipotropiums, your teotropiums. Uh, so very, very important uh, to think about that. Um, there is also one I, I wanted to mention, um, solid potassium dosage forms. I've been asked this question before, and how do I assess this? What do, what do I do with this? Well, with hyoscyamine, the first thing I would ask is, you know, are they taking this medication on a regular basis? Okay, it's got a pretty relatively short half-life, that type of thing. If the patient's taking it once a month, it, you know, the, the interaction with potassium and the slowing down of the uh, motility of the, the gut and that type of thing with the potassium potentially causing an ulcer, it's probably not a huge deal on my radar. Not to say it can't happen potentially, um, but if patients aren't taking anticholinergics very often, then it's probably not uh, quite as big a deal. Uh, in the event that, you know, we are concerned with this issue, um, you know, patients may not like liquid potassium, but it certainly is an option. We can also uh, dissolve uh, some of the uh, potassium tablets and things like that as well. So uh, there are some ways to kind of wiggle around that interaction. Uh, but uh, just wanted to point that out because that definitely um, does come up and I've definitely seen it flag on drug interaction screen. So important to ask, ask questions and ensure that uh, patients are using uh, those safely together. All right, I think with that, I'm going to sign off for today. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, if you found something useful from it, uh, definitely leave us a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, share us with a classmate, a colleague, friend. Um, definitely help spread the, the word if you found this podcast uh, helpful. Go sign up, reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free uh, top 200 guide. Uh, where I lay out the most important clinical pearls of the top 200 drugs. 31-page uh, PDF, uh, absolutely free with uh, simply an email. And then we also uh, send out emails with uh, um, types of offers as well as uh, every week. Uh, we send out an email with updates on our uh, podcast and let you know what, what new episode is out. So go go check that out. Subscribe at reallifepharmacology.com. And uh, certainly uh, take the time, go check out our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, take care. Have a great rest of your day. Attention Baker shoppers. Did you know there's a world of innovative services and patient care right in store? It's where an award-winning pharmacy and nationally recognized care come together. Connect with one of our licensed pharmacists today at your local Baker's and experience the care you and your family deserve. Bakers, a world of care is in store. Services and availability vary by location. Age and other restrictions may apply. For coverage, consult your health insurance company. Visit the pharmacy or our site for details. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.